of years, before massive ditches like this one had been dug, the only way that people could walk around in the boggy marshlands of the Somerset levels was on wooden trackways. And we're going to try and find one of these ancient timber tracks, which is supposed to be buried somewhere in this rather large field underneath all this peat. And not only that, but we've set ourselves the challenge of trying to build a trackway of our own. And we've got just three days to do it. Sixty-two, sixty-three, sixty-four, sixty-five, sixty-six, sixty-seven, sixty-eight, sixty-nine, seventy. Right, Tony, so that's your seventy paces from the southwest corner of this field. Which means that according to the excavation report of 1926, you're standing where a chap called Harold St George Grey uh, discovered the remains of the trackway in this position. We've got St George Grey's own annotated copy of, of the map of the site. So you walked paste, in fact, from the corner of the field there into this point here. And this shows exactly where he reckons, uh, you know, the trackway was discovered. Because that's right, isn't it, Richard? That's right. I mean, the 210 foot measurement is, is fairly accurate. But this is showing us how far out from the ditch it is, for which we don't have any measurement at all. Oh, there's a pretty arbitrary little line, though. We, oh, we can't just rely on oh, that. Oh, come on, uh, Tony. What are we talking, 1926? The fact that he bothered to put it... They weren't put... brain dead in 1926. Yeah, they didn't, the usually, bother, they didn't usually bother to write it down, though. You know, whenever you're unsure, if you notice, your voice goes up. Well, I'm just being emphatic. <laughs> you see? <laughs> <laughs> The nearby nature reserve gives us some idea of what the Somerset levels must have looked like in prehistoric times. This is how the levels look today. And this is the position I paced out as the site of the excavation in 1926. And based on the evidence discovered here, and more wooden piles found here in 1939, the theory is that a prehistoric trackway crossed the marsh in this direction providing a route between these two areas of higher dry ground. So I've done some geophysics. Uh, right. They haven't printed it out, but they've got some results. Well, yeah, we've got some basic results. The, the, the targets are very difficult here today, and we've found a couple of possible linears. One is actually just over here, see, by the... Uh, by the ranging pole, John's yeah. just coming up too, and it goes all the way down to the corner of the grid. Well, that's the wrong angle, isn't it, really, exactly. for what we want? It's the strongest yeah. anomaly that we've actually got. Yeah. But we have got another weaker anomaly going along here, but it appears to coincide with the vegetation. What? This what change. Is it? Vegetation change. Well, there's all these nettles that are showing up. Presumably that's an indication of the soil type. Mm. Can't it be. could be <laughs> caused by cleaning <laughs> out the ditches. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they grow where the right. ground's been disturbed, don't they? Yeah. So what are we going to do? We can't just wait for more and more results before we well, dig we've a trench. Got, we've, just... we've got to get a trench yeah, we'll get um, somewhere across here. If we go out about sort of, what, 10 metres, a couple of metres wide? Yeah, it doesn't have to be very we'll look, wide. And if we hit it fine, we can widen the trench. And if we don't, we can just we it, go on it. a bit further out into the field. You're so gung-ho about this trench, we have never once found anything in the first trench that we've dug in time. Well, let's feet. get on with it then. Let's not find it, and then we can carry on. All right. right? So, so let's, let's get, get, get the, the diggers in. They've had their coffee. Look. Diggers! Despite modern drainage, the peat soil's too soft and wet to bring in heavy mechanical diggers, which means that all our trenches this weekend will have to be dug by hand. The geophysics survey is now ready to look at, but the evidence for a trackway is very slight. With the old eye of faith, can you see a depression running through there? It's not clear. It's definitely very subtle, yeah. <laughs> the problem we've got is identifying the trackway and the data, it's not like a solid wall. Yeah. It's not going to be a, a black and white line. It's a trackway made up of solid pieces of timber, some of which may be missing. 
it's an incomplete structure. In fact, so the data can't possibly give us a solid yeah. picture. Trying to find a trackway with geophysics hadn't been done before, and we thought it was worth a try. But clearly now, the geophysics team will do better to look for evidence of the people who built the trackway, up here in Hobbs Field on the higher ground. Meanwhile, Carenza has been looking that at aerial photos scared. of the area. That's, that's brilliant, actually. That's really nice, because this is all flooded. All this black here is water. And this is this... Um, so this is where it might have run from? Yeah, it's heading straight towards that. And this is Hobbs Field, but it actually looks like an island there. You can see the sort of standing water all that's around it, the yeah. north side of it, where the trackway hits it. Um, oh, really? When was this? Back in 1945. Tony! Come and have a look. We got something? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. And in trench one, two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not have to eat my words. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, what's look this? at what's that. This? Well, this, this is a timber here, look, sticking up. And that bit's just a, a flake off the top of it. Can I get in the trench? Yeah, yeah. It's come in, you know, it's just a big enough. Mesh. Well, no, this, this now, is how do you here. know that that is not just some old bit of log? We don't. <laughs> no, Yet. but. I mean, the fact is, it's diving straight down. It's, it it's, yeah, it's, it's unlikely to be driftwood or anything like that. Yeah. And I mean, it don't look as though it's root shaped, does it? No, I mean, no, it's, no, it, it looks, looks like it's a plank. It's actually it? a, a, a like shaped that. timber. Yeah. And it is. It's diving right down in. But this uh, this wood, it's it's really spongy. Yeah. It's, Would yeah, it really it's, have lasted thousands of years? Well, but, the, but you see, yes, when you look, see the water but, but coming Tony, out of that. Look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tony, look at it down further, though. That's, that bit has come off the top here. That's where it's really spongy. If it, you hear it, can you hear it? Oh, that's good. That's firm. That bodes well for a date as well, doesn't it? Well, that's, that's probably oak, yeah. If that, it's full that, of that, rings that, like that and it's hard I mean, like and, that. You know, that is well preserved. You can feel that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a yeah. solid timber. I can't believe it. It looks like we've found the trackway with our first trench. But what does a prehistoric trackway look like? That's based on the 1926, right. what we know of, of the From thing. the timbers, yeah. Does it really have been that narrow? Yeah, even narrow, perhaps. Well, some of them are on the street track. I'll show you the yeah. a street track reconstruction, look. It's just a plank walkway. So it, it could have been like that. No, no, no doubt why it shouldn't. Oh, yeah. After all, it's only got to get you across the marsh. Yeah. Right, what have we got? Can I have your opinion on some things that are sticking out here, Dan? Can you see this? No, yeah, there's the a timber sticking, sticking out, the out there. And then there's another. You can see bits of it poking through. It looks as if there's something laid that way. And the alignment looks reasonable because it's heading towards that, if that is alignment, it's heading towards the trench over over there. And it could be could be the alignment that we're looking for. Yep, yep, it could be. Um, you certainly do get a lot of natural fenwood in the peat around here, and mm -hmm. you'll just have to clean up the edge of this section to see one way or another. Right. We do have some clues to the age of the trackway. Bronze Age burial mounds have been found nearby on the higher ground. And this bone tool, which is thought to be Iron Age, was found in the 1920s, almost exactly where we're digging. Also, these pieces of Iron Age pottery were found in the field next door which means that the impressive timbers we're now uncovering in Trench 1 could date anywhere between 2300 BC and 43 AD. And we've got this piece, you see. Yeah, Point it out, Richard. Yeah. The... This one here. It looks like a plank fragment. It's had a mortise hole cut in it. They've got more fragments of planking up here, those two. So there's no doubt that this is part of a prehistoric trackway now? It looks like it. I mean, we may be... We're getting uprights here, so it looks like it is within the structure. Although, uh, what part of the structure it is, can't be sure yet. Well, it all looks so, rather spread at the moment, doesn't it? Yeah. With a lot of, you know, planks at different angles. It almost looks like one of those sort of great masses of timber put at the end of a track where you're coming up to the, the, the higher land. Well... Like a platform, isn't it, they, they found in the past? The other thing is, we might not have a... It might not be as simple as it's reported in the 1920s excavation. Yeah. It might yeah. be a more complex structure, which might not just be a trackway. You're I mean, being cagey. I don't understand what else it could be. Well, we, we do know of, of other prehistoric sites that had lots of piles and lots of wood associated with them, but weren't necessarily just, just trackways, like Flag Fen. Yeah. And what was that? 
Well, ritual is always the explanation. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Back on that again. I, I wonder. Well, I thought Richard, Richard was being a bit shifty. Yeah. yeah. Well, there, there, it looked as if there was an awful lot of metal objects in in a sort of shallow, sort of pool lake or whatever, and it was like as if they'd gone out to this platform and thrown this stuff off the end. There was so much of it, which you might do if you were interested in water deities or something like that. You were making offerings of material to them. Now, we've never had anything like that in this area, but it's a very watery environment, mm. so there's no reason why we shouldn't. I mean, that's that's a fantastic collection of wood. And we've got more than a road. We've got a mystery. Oh, I mean, this, this is going to be a, a job to unpick this, Richard, isn't it? To, to read to it a sort it out. It certainly is. Right, I think that's it. <laughs> What's important is that it's not just the wood that's preserved in the peat, but the environmental evidence too. Any seeds, pollen and beetles found in the soil around the structure should allow us to build up a detailed picture of how the landscape looked thousands of years ago. And this ain't modern roots, you reckon? No, no, that's, no, that's definitely that's prehistoric, just all fossil. prehistoric reed, still preserved. Well, you can still, still bend it, can't yeah. you? Elsewhere on site, progress is less exciting. I make up here looking at this high ground up here to see if there's any evidence of settlement. Um, there's lots of earthworks, but most of them are associated with um, a farmstead we didn't know about that uh, presumably is uh, post-medieval, and this plough patterns rich and furrow, that sort of thing. But I can't see anything directly related to the uh, settlement or a trackway. Which is probably just as well, because we've got more than enough in Trench 1. Go on, Phil, what you doing? What you got? Pot. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! Just dropped out of the section, didn't it? Bloody hell, that's like the Iron Age. That's it! Yeah? Richard? Tony! What? Do around the show, oh, please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll learn him one day. Well, we'll, we'll learn him one day. can't be that day. excited and then... Uh, what am I looking at? Look at that! Pot! <laughs> You're hey. at Probable Iron Age pot. Now, why do we think this is Iron Age? Now that's a good question. Because <laughs> it, it's, it's grotty and yeah. crap and horrible, really. And is the answer answer to that. And it's not made on. It's not made on a wheel. And it's which not glazed. Is, I mean, it's yeah. really. Uh, it's not one of the Roman wares. It's probably not coarse enough for Bronze Age, is it? And the nice thing about it is that it's actually come from the level of the timbers. Yeah. Whereabouts yeah. was it? Uh, right in the side here. You won't be able to see it from where you are, but right down where my trowel is. I think it's amazing. You should see that coloured pot <laughs> in that coloured ground. <laughs> <laughs> Find some more. Find some more. That's right, Phil, don't stop there. Ancient woods, prehistoric reed, one little piece of pottery, and... Oh! oh look at that! <laughs> <laughs> Get the rest of it, you can have your beer yeah. in it tonight, right? <laughs> God, ah, is that good or that's, not, that's eh? Good. I told you there was more of it. <laughs> <laughs> and that was right next to the yeah. first bit? Yeah, That's incredible. Well, he might just have busted it looking for it. No, no, that's, no, that's no, an old break. old break. That's an old break. Thank you, oh, thank you. Yes. Cynic Robinson. <laughs> that's an old break, Dad. Yeah. And that's, so that's definitely rim, isn't it? Yeah, and it, it's, it's irregular, like as if it's handmade, you see. Basically just finished off around the top, look like that. I'll well, take it back to Sir and Steve, eh? Yeah. Well, hang on, he might find some more yet. Uh, You're expecting me to find it now, aren't you? Well, we're all poised here, waiting yeah, for the I rest know. of it. Well, go away and poise somewhere else, I mean. <laughs> Having cleaned up the pottery for Sue's reconstruction, the team now reckon that this small bowl could be either Iron Age or Bronze Age in date. Although, according to Richard, if our mystery structure does turn out to be Iron Age, then it'll be the first of its kind to have been discovered in the Somerset levels. We've been trying to sort out. Great national was Robin here. Congratulating ourselves on progress today. It wasn't too bad, was it? Yeah, it was very good. We've been more enthusiastic today, but once we've actually found our first prehistoric site with environmental evidence on the first day, at the end of the first day, when you're normally feeling depressed. In trench one. Yes, in trend noise technique. So what are we going to do tomorrow? Well, we've got to do a lot more work on the on the wood, of course. And, um, 
it's not immediately obvious what it is. There's lots of lots yeah, of timber one, in there. See a larger area if that would exist. Yeah. yeah. So we'll bash on with that. But then yeah, the, the reconstruction. Yeah, I mean I'm like itching to get started really. <laughs> right, so it's the end of day one, possibly the best day one that we've ever had on Time Team. <laughs> but there's still a long way to go. We don't know which direction this trackway went in. If it is a trackway or maybe it is this ritual platform or a prehistoric turning circle or whatever. Lay by. We'll find more <laughs> about it tomorrow and uh, we'll watch Phil build his reconstruction. Join us after the break. Congratulations. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Day two, and a decision has been taken to widen Trench 1 to give us a better look at what we've discovered here. Ironically, the water which helped to preserve the timber is starting to become a problem. While back at base at the garden centre, water is the key element in the process of separating the environmental evidence from the peat. Got some bits in it. Got some seeds in here for you as well. Looks like yeah. a sedge there. Right, okay. On show next door at the Peat Moor Visitor Centre is a reconstructed Iron Age village complete with forge. And as I'm planning to get involved in the building of the prehistoric trackway later on, this is just the place to get myself properly equipped for the job by making an Iron Age style axe. Oh, it looks easy to start with. It gets quite knackering after a while. This time, we'll start to drift the hole through. The principle is that you can pierce through red hot metal with cold metal. Now, if you'll hold that on there. Yeah, I got it. Mm. Let me come round. And this is to drift the hole through in order to make the eye for the handle of the axe head. And as long as uh, this stays fairly cold and the iron is hot, then this will, will pierce through it. Out at the site, although we've got a fantastic collection of worked timbers in Trench 1, our smaller excavation beside the ditch yeah. hasn't revealed anything yeah. other than natural wood. The plan now is to open up a new trench here, to test the idea that a trackway runs in this direction, possibly linking up with our structure. Meanwhile, the Iron Age axe is shaping up nicely and is almost finished. Speed is the essence. There you are. Now you're hammering the very edge to yeah. put the edge on, do you see? Harder. Right, that's very good. Now turn it over the other way, that's it. Over at Trench 1, we now have more expertise at work. Rowena Gale, our wood specialist. Well, that looks like quite a nice piece of round wood with its bark still in yeah. position there. Well, it'll be interesting to see if that sort of thing was, was root or was it round wood. And Robert Howard, who's looking for a suitable sample for dendro dating. The latest find here is unexpected to say the least. It's in remarkably good condition, isn't it? What is it? Which one is it? Humorous, it's humorous, is it? Good lord. Mick! Come and have a look at this! Bone is something that's rarely found on the Somerset levels because normally the soil's too acidic for it to survive. It's a, it's a human, is human is it? upper arm. Yeah. Is it? Oh, yeah. So Caroline tells me. Well, she, knows the, she knows her stuff on that human bones. Puts, uh, a whole different perspective well, on it, doesn't it? Does, it? Doesn't it? Because what's that doing? Is there any others? That's the other There's thing we should plant, ask, isn't it? Piece of rib. Blimey. Yeah. <laughs> so th those ends just been weathered away, do we reckon? Well, we don't know. When we get them cleaned up, then uh, I mean, if they have been chewed or anything like that. Caroline, yeah. you're quite happy about that, are you? Quite certain about that? The rib as well. Let's have a look. The size and shape is very human. Yeah. Animal bones are usually much wider and thicker and more dense. You can yeah. actually feel the difference between a human bone and an animal bone. And what about Ooh. with this one? Yeah. 
That again, it's longer. The, the humerus of many animals is more shorter and truncated and far more robust, whereas the human humerus is longer, more elongated. All right. But it looks like an adult bone and can also say what side it's from. It's from. Just here. Yeah. All right. Can you tell which side of the body that one comes from? Yes, this is from the right side of the body. How do you know? Uh, this groove that goes at the bottom of the rib and also towards the back. So they're both that's from the same side of the body. Ah, then. That's so they could nice. be off the same carcass. Makes you wonder. It makes you wonder if it isn't the top bit of somebody being put in, doesn't it? Mick. Yeah. Come and have a look at this. Got oh, a, crikey, a plank. A really big plank and another bit of bone sticking out. Oh, the crikey! Yeah, what's that then? Look, there's another. Oh, there's a bone. There's another bone at the end. And this is very clayey, just here. Yeah. And that does look like a real good plank, doesn't yep. it? Good That's lord. Nice Looks that, out too. We want something big like that, don't we, for a for a well, date, for a don't we? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. Well, but this we're, is, we're into a whole different ball game with this ah, now, aren't Caroline. we? Caroline. What have we got? Have a look at that on the end there. Have another look down but, there. Got another. I think probably. Oh. Oh, fab. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's a clavicle, isn't right. it? Yes, somebody's shown. Sure. Which Colorbone. side of the bodies? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Okay, so we've got a clavicle, oh, a rib, and a, and a humerus, humerus all, all on the right side. Right side. Right. Okay. Put it back because <laughs> yeah, we have yeah, to record, record that. It. Although it's hard to leave Trench 1 for fear of missing something, we need to start work on making our own planks to build our reconstruction trackway across this marsh. But before that, we've got a lot of hard work ahead of us. You've got an accent, Tony, I see. On the lender hand. Well, this is a noble tree, well, isn't it? It certainly is a bit of a beast, isn't it? It's an oak, uh, 200 years old. The first job, cutting the bark off, gives me a chance to try out my Iron Age axe. What's that axe like, Tony? Good it's very good. I good didn't realise it would be anywhere near as sharp as this. What we're going to try to do is to split this oak into planks using nothing more than a mallet and a series of wooden wedges. This is a traditional way of splitting timber. Like this oak, um, which has been used from the That's Neolithic to right, the present yeah. time, really. Now. Oh, it you looks. Can, yeah, you can see it probably going along there, yeah, but certainly yeah. at the end here, oh, wow. we're opening Starting right away. Yeah, yeah. And we've just got to make sure it keeps running straight to the centre. Yes. That's enough of that one a minute. It's quite scary when you when you hear it go. You know you don't <laughs> want it to go too far. The technique's simple enough, but the task itself requires more than just patience and brute force. The skill in achieving a decent sized plank is in deciding when to follow the natural grain in the wood. Shot. Yes! That looks okay, good. I'm worried about oh, that. Oh, it's, really it's gone. Through. Yeah, it's gone there. They must it's have had problems strange. like this. Oh, it's, yes. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's the nature of the material, it. isn't it? Started well though, didn't it? You gonna go? Yep. Right, now we'll try for the real thing. That was good <laughs> practice. Oh, that was a practice. <laughs> We've now got another trench underway. Investigating one of the possible settlement ditches suggested by geophysics up here in the sandy soils of the higher ground. And appropriately at the garden centre, we now have a small army of environmentalists working to provide us with a picture of the prehistoric landscape around the structure in Trench One. Um, this piece is again in horrible condition. You can see it's um, oh, how squidgy, soft that it? is. <laughs> yes, full of holes, yeah. <laughs> uh, very rotten. But that's mm. nice because it's got its bark in situ oh, there, yes. and you can see it's sort of slightly silvery Still shiny, almost. Yes. yes, that's right. And I think that's probably a bit of hazel. Oh, right, yes. That's a slightly drier species. Yes, yes, that's right. So that's not such wetland wood, so that's looking as if either wood was brought in or there were dr drier areas very right. close at hand. Right. Uh, this piece up here is um, a piece of... It's it from a, a larger piece, and it's oak heartwood. Oh, that's, oak, so that's an even drier species. Yeah, absolutely, yes. yes. Does this sort of variety of species 
that we're getting fit with what's coming from the pollen, as far as you can tell, Heather. Yes, yes it does. We've still got quite a long way to go oh. with the pollen. <laughs> um, and it's not in the best state of preservation that we would like. One thing we have just found, which is quite nice, we, we've got some water lily pollen. Oh, lovely. And this is oh, this that's... sample is from just above the, the structure. Right, so that's open water. I mean, that would be growing in a pool, should, should be. Should be. Have, 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 have a look. It's, it's nice and spiky. Oh, yes, I see the round sort of red one with the little spines <laughs> yes, on the outside. Yes, it's very distinctive. Goodness, that's really surface. interesting. So it's yeah. actually building up a picture of a bit mm. dry land nearby with an oak trees mm. growing on it, blackthorn, mm. mm. a few open pools mm. of water, maybe willow trees around the edge, water lilies growing in the open yes, pools. Yes, looks like mm. it. And our structure somewhere in the middle. I don't think we've ever had such a wealth of evidence in one trench. Environmental finds, work, timber, and now human bone too. Everyone I think now agrees that we're dealing with more than just a trackway across the marsh. It's a nice view, that's, that's, actually. That's isn't wonderful, it? that's fantastic, a... isn't it? But there's no obvious alignment. There's you know, not, I, I was just thinking that, like, trying to see if it worked out as yeah, a trackway. It doesn't it, seem it's to. It's not, does it? No. One theory is that it could be a burial platform. They had a similar burial practice in Florida. Yeah. Native Americans in Florida, yeah. and uh, the sketches of that show sort of, sort of rows basically of, yeah. of, of bodies. There's going to be some recent ones, some that have been there for six months, yeah. some fall into pieces. What? In Loxley Wood, the quest continues for the perfect plank. You want to cut through here? Yeah, Hang right. on, don't, don't let's, uh... That's got him. Hey. There you go. That's actually not a bad plank. No, all said that's a bit done. better than the first one, isn't it? Well, you've got quite yeah. a width. couple of metres. Is it completely yeah, away? Yeah. God, it's all there, isn't it? <laughs> we need to just hack off that... Yeah, oh, he's on. I oh, mean, I'm wondering yeah. about how the hell do we walk across marshy ground carrying this damn great lump of timber? <laughs> Very carefully. <laughs> Time now to see if we found evidence of the settlement ditches suggested by the geophysics. What you got then, chaps? Uh, I think it's uh, we've got an edge on that side, yeah. an edge on this side, and this uh, very silty sand in the centre, which, which could be the feature that they picked up on the geophysical, but it could also be a natural feature. Right. But yeah. we're not getting any charcoal or any fines in that. Not in at that all. Sil silty deposit. There's a few bits stuck in here, isn't it? I think they've been using this stuff yeah. as roofing tile. Yeah, it looks like a roofing yeah, tile with a nail in there. Yeah. So, only evidence of a medieval farmstead here in Hobbs Field, and no sign of anything prehistoric. I think my inclination would be to not do any more and to concentrate down on the on the main site, which I think uh, we need to put more work into. Over. Positively musical, isn't it, eh? <laughs> the light's fading fast, and we still have to cut points onto these timbers ready for tomorrow. As an experiment, we're each using axes from different periods. A flint axe, a bronze axe, and my iron axe made earlier today. Each of them leave distinctive cut marks on the wood, which is one way archaeologists can identify work timber found in their trenches. Look at this flint one. I mean, you can see the wood is just so much more, I don't know, it's so torn, isn't it? It's, it's but, almost but concave, too, isn't it? There's a very concave surface. But so you've got a very concave surface with the, with the bronze one, but the... The cut marks are just so much more distinct. Yeah, you can see but, each individual <laughs> one. But nowhere near as distinct as what you got with the iron axe, yeah, as... which is a, a lot flatter surface too. Yeah. Right, Seeing come there's a on. Difference there. <laughs> Let's get going. It's certainly going to be a learning exercise when we try and build this tomorrow. Already just watching a mortise hole being cut, I can see how similar it looks to this bit of timber coming out of trench one. Meanwhile, Robert Howard, our dendrochronologist, has chosen his samples of wood for dendro dating. He needs to get these back to the lab tonight if he's going to have a chance of phoning through the results before the end of tomorrow. 
Oh, oh, that's wow. looking good. Yeah, that's a good sample. It's uh, it's got quite a few rings on it. Yeah, it's a bit of a off radius. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, the center is down here somewhere. Yeah. But it looks quite tight, so that means that uh, there's a good prospect for getting a date on that. Well, fingers crossed. Whether the date turns out to be Iron Age or Bronze Age, we do know that the people who built it would have lived in a round house similar to this. And inside, it's the perfect setting to discuss the structure in Trench One. I've been looking through the textbooks and, and for example, there's an, uh, there's an example in Florida of a raised platform above water with, with bodies on it. But I think, you know, what makes me slightly uneasy is that this is, it's a unique site. We don't have anything else like it in this part of the world, in the levels. Do we have anything like it in England? Well, not no. as far as I can We've see. We've assumed so they existed because we don't find the bodies anywhere else. Both Grey and Bully clearly saw something which they interpreted as a trackway. What we don't know is exactly how their very brief record of what they saw in the 1920s tallies with what was actually there yeah. in the 1920s. Yeah. Yeah. No, true. I mean, well, having I given us a very detailed record, they've mentioned planks and they've mentioned uprights, and we've got bits of plank and we've got uprights. Mm. So they're assuming it was a track. We're they're saying assuming maybe it's it was a track, partly because a track was thought to exist yeah. in that area. Mm. So, end of day two, join us for day three when we're going to see the most audacious reconstruction that we've tried yet. <laughs> Plenty to do on day three. What have we got? We've got to look for the continuation of the trackway in the north. We've got all the environmental stuff to continue to sort out. And hopefully we're going to get the date from the dendro from, from Rob in Sheffield. So we might have a site of national importance, or we might be totally barking up the wrong tree. Hopefully we'll find out tomorrow. Day three, and the hunt's on for more evidence that this could be a burial platform. Although we haven't given up on the idea that there may be a trackway associated with this structure. The theory that a trackway crossed the marsh here was based on timbers found in two locations. Here, where we're digging, and over here, on the edge of the King Sedgemoor drain. Stuart has been looking in the edges of this huge ditch, and has found some timbers which could be part of the original evidence for the trackway. I think that's what we need to do in here. Yeah. Just have a quick clean up of the edge section. Well, this and yeah. the other one further down. Definitely, yeah. yeah. The other one's got, got more timbers exposed, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah, the other yeah. one yeah. might be a bit more interesting, but as you can see, we've got tree stumps yeah. coming out here, so. I mean, that's just one log as far as we can see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of this material could just be roots, but yeah. we need to give it a clean up in all the areas Stuart's looked at to, um, to see what's there. Hello, Robert. Hello. It's Tony. The first excitement of the day now, because Robert's called from the Dendro Lab and has got news about one of the wood samples taken from Trench One. There's a groove along one edge, the, the thick edge. A groove around one edge. And it looks like a piece of tongue and groove uh, boarding. It well, looks like a, a piece of tongue and groove boarding. Yeah, that's that's yeah. going to be like that. Uh, dates, uh, as yet. He hasn't got he hasn't got any idea of dates yet though. <sighs> but no dating until this afternoon, after lunch, I would have thought. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, but, but really Tony, uh, what I suggest uh, Richard does is excavate downward through that timber and see whether this groove continues. This is the upright timber Robert's talking about, timber number 11. And Jenny's already started looking for signs of the tongue and grooving, which could indicate that this bit of wood has been deliberately shaped for a purpose. While over at the nature reserve, the time's come to test the construction methods that would have been used to build a wood structure across a marsh in prehistoric times. Maybe that these mortise holes, which are quite low down, were just used to help drive the piles in, but um, we can find out. In the what, uh, what sort of width are we going to for on poles? They mentioned the piles being four foot I apart thought that's what you're in, yeah. in their 1920s excavation. So I think if we go for that, really. Well, Victor's so drawing, sure based on the evidence found in 1926, is the blueprint for this experiment, which is clearly going to be a question of trial and error. So we've got to get it the right way round to it. To get the mortise round the outside. <laughs> and, uh, oh. Okay. Alright. One, two, three. three. Cool. Can we? Oh. <laughs> that ain't gonna no, go. No, that ain't there, is it? Oh ah! 
it's going. Is it for a minute at all or is no, it no, doing no, anything no. at all, is it? I think the problem is that they're really fat at the end. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's at the roughly point. I mean, the only other solution around it is to split off. Split some in half and just use the half, one good half. And well, that's, you see, that's what I think half. is a good reason for splitting yeah. them. I yeah, would have yeah. thought they're a lot more slender. Absolutely. Yeah. Jenny, is there any sign of any tongue and grooving on that? There's a slight groove down this side, and each end's definitely angled, but yeah. uh, I don't, it needs cleaning up a lot, I think. It doesn't to... feel as if it's been carved or shaped at all. So... No, although the sides are definitely cut at an angle. Right. Yeah. It's a lot wider, isn't it, than when Robert took the sample off the top? Yeah, it was just at the bit that was sticking out, sort of the broken off bit. So, yeah, yeah it's much, much wider at the bottom. And is there anything with it in the hole? There are lots of sort of little fragments of wood in the soil and the water, so we kept a bag for... Right, in case there might be shavings or something like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Is there any possibility of us taking it out, having a look at it? It seems to be going down a long way, so I think we just have to keep digging and see how far it goes. OK, well, we'd better leave you plain in the mud, hadn't we? Yeah. Until okay. you get it on a bit further. The water may make it more difficult to excavate, but we certainly wouldn't have got such good evidence without it. And back at the garden centre, we've got an emerging environmental picture which is rich in detail. The pollen analysis, for instance, has not only identified specific tree types... Can you see that one there? That's oh, willow. Yes. Oh, goodness. So this is the willow. But we've also found evidence of plants associated with disturbed ground, suggesting that there was pasture or settlement not far away. It's like a golf ball. It does. <laughs> it looks just like a golf ball. Those are all tiny yeah. little pores which we can focus in and out on. What, what is that? It's a family uh, goosefoot which has all sorts of uh, different herbs in it. And it's associated with, again, these fields, disturbed ground. Are these black bits the charcoal? There, yes, there's a nice big bit of charcoal there. Let's bring so, it up. So that would have blown in. Uh, it's only very tiny. Oh, right, sort of from smoke from the fires that Some, were up in the air? Something like that. Could they have come in from some distance, or do you think that suggests there's a fire quite close? It could have come a distance. It's right. difficult yeah. to put a distance Yeah, by settlement, yes. perhaps. Yeah. Right. What's important is that all the environmental evidence seems to paint the same picture, and crucially, that includes species of beetle, which confirm that the structure in Trench 1 was surrounded by large pools of water. The big, bright, oh, gosh, blue yeah. metallic one is yeah. indicative of open water. Oh, yes, the iridescent one. Yeah. yeah, and if you move further down, I'll yeah. try and shift them across for you. These species here are towards the water's edge, where it starts to get quite well vegetated. Oh, yes, yeah. And, of course, the beetles wouldn't have gone as far, would they? They're, they're much, presumably, they're not blowing around like the pollen is, so they're giving us a better idea of the, the environment very close to our site. Generally, there are some species which do fly very well and end up dropping in by mistake and dying and becoming incorporated, but overall they're much more indicative of the local environment. So we can be quite confident that close to our site we've got open water and water's edge and dry land. That's right, yeah. Right. Which means that the conditions our track builders are working in today are in fact very similar to those faced by woodworkers in the Somerset levels thousands of years ago. Without the aid of a safety net. Oh, no, Stilt walker. That's doing well. It's Just going in, isn't it? Yeah, that's going down. Right, it's kind of bouncing. But it's yeah. bouncing, bouncing though, isn't it? Yeah. He's a daring young man <laughs> on the flying <laughs> trapeze. <laughs> <laughs> While work goes on to clean up the timbers at the King Sedgemoor drain, and we wait to see more evidence of Timber 11, the big challenge for today in Trench 1 is to record the evidence found so far and to try and make sense of it. Could this be the remains of a burial platform? Well, we've found another rib, which now gives us a total of four human bones, and we've also found two sheep jaw bones to add to the puzzle. However, we've got these five upright timbers which seem to be in a line rather than supporting a platform. But my turn to get involved with the track making, which is going well now that they're splitting the piles to make them thinner. 
Each lesson learned is making progress quicker, such as making a smaller hole first before trying to push the pile in. There you go, look, there's another lesson. What? Creating these woodworking chips on yeah. site. Oh, and Jenny just found a load of little chips yeah. down in the bottom of one of the planks. Oh, there you go, there is, there is happening, look. Right, now what we want you to do now, Tony, is stand on this bit, if you could, hold the top and jump up and down, please. That's the <laughs> That's technique. Serious? Yeah, this is the, uh, yeah, this is the technique. <laughs> if I fall off, this isn't a wind up. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Just... <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> God, how do I get As up? If we do. <laughs> 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 and just jump up and down. Yeah, jump, jump up and just down jump on up it. and down. No, in my way, it's not make any difference. It's going. It is going. Is it? Yes, it is. He doesn't look that heavy, though, does he? No, he don't. <laughs> well, it might look crude. I'd be more Boy, impressed if the water hadn't gone down me the insides of my waders. <laughs> <laughs> At the King's Sedgemoor drain, what we need is the local archaeologist's help. Could this be part of a trackway? This may be roots. See where it's come off branching here and right yeah. in the middle. Yeah. So the fact that it's all rounded, you know, I was, I was right to be a bit suspicious about it. Well, when we were looking further down the bank, we saw lots of lots of stumps of yeah. trees in the bank of the river. Yeah, yeah. But just because we've probably got some large roots coming in here doesn't mean it's all natural, necessarily. Right. Well, given that what we've got seems to be very ambiguous, we're going to concentrate on Trench 1, which is clearly requiring a new style of excavation. It feels like it was coming to the point on one side, but we've got a, I think it's tapering off on this side. So why can't we just pull this out? You've got to really uncover it virtually all the way down, because if it's cut to a point, the point will just break off, because yeah, yeah. there's yeah. a hell of a lot of suction. Because it's actually not as strong as it looks, is it? It's actually... It's, it's, well, it's mostly water, this bit of wood, if you think about it, so it hasn't got a lot of strength left in it. This is very bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, mm. at, the, at the bottom, there's about, there's about that much left are the tips, so we're almost right at the very tip of it. So we've almost got it freed on this side. And once we've got it freed on this side, we'll just gently work round the other side and then hopefully it should come free. Done. <laughs> you come for the event then, Tony? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. We're just about to lift it. Right, we're gonna I need a bit flat. of room here. <laughs> Very here. soon. All right. You ready? Yeah, yeah. Right, let's go. Okay, it's coming up. Careful with your head. Okay. Richard. Got it. Okay, Slow. are we just gonna vertical? Yeah, keep Those it vertical for the moment. Okay, you two got right. it. Right, gradually tilting. No, no. And you, you don't want to get, get up. your hand underneath. Yeah. Don't get in the middle of the bit, Ange. Yeah. Okay. Gradually tilting. Which way up towards me? No, leave it like this. Oh, like that's that. it, that's it. Right. And down. Is this fizzy water? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the sizzling noise as I'm falling on the wood is a bit disturbing. Is that, is that bent end there where they've knocked it in? Yeah, it looks, it looks like that it's cut to a point. Just like Phil and I were doing this morning. If you rub your finger up and down, you can actually feel the facets that were yeah. made by the tool that worked it. And yeah, different different axe marks, aren't they? So, on the side. so what's this tongue and groove business? Rob was talking about the top. Oh, that's right. There's a groove in one side, but there's no evidence of it, is there? Um, as far as we can see here. It is very much like the kind of thing that we were working on this morning, and Phil sort of came to the conclusion that this shape was the best yeah. shape for the yeah. piles to be in. And we're now ready to test that theory by taking a walk across the marsh. Well, it's keeping my feet dry. I reckon that's well, a good job yeah. well done, that is. <laughs> it works. Well, what do you think then, gentlemen? I think it's brilliant. Right. <laughs> I think we can be rightly proud of ourselves yeah. over this. Well, I think we've achieved what we set out to do. Well, it probably don't look much, but it's functional. Well, when That's you right. think how far we've got in, in a day. And know. that's starting from scratch. Yep. And we've learned a lot. What we're desperate to know now is how old is the structure in Trench 1? Uh, eight. 
three, seven. Has Robert managed to get a dendro date from the wood samples he took yesterday? Have you got anything to tell us? Uh, yes, I have. Well, I've got dates for all three. Of You've got those. dates for all three? Yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> we are all waiting here, absolutely agog. For the structure date, I think you're looking at a date of around about, let's say, uh, 900 BC. Felling date of 900 BC. Yeah, which is Bronze Age. Br which is Bronze Age, Late okay. Bronze Age. All right. There's a lot of excitement here, Robert, yeah. about that. Well, I think so too. <laughs> so the puzzle in this trench isn't Iron Age, but Late Bronze Age, which means that the worked timbers we've unearthed are an incredible 3,000 years old. But what kind of structure was it? Well, one theory we've discussed was that it could have been a burial platform. Could it be the burial structure that we thought with the old bodies on and the bones dropping through into the... Could be. You know, I'd have expected more bones, I think, myself. But uh, we've still got to explain why they're there. I mean, you know, we, they may have existed elsewhere, but here we've actually got them on the wood. In fact, we don't have the number of uprights needed to support a platform. What we have is more of a line of posts, and this does suggest another intriguing possibility. Was this a ritual boundary dividing off the settlement, where parts of skeletons were deposited after having been previously laid out to decompose by the edge of the water? This would explain why so few bones were discovered. An example of a boundary like this was found at Flag Fen near Peterborough, on which we've based this reconstruction. So what we've got is evidence of a late Bronze Age structure which is very different in its construction from anything found in the Somerset levels before. In fact, I think the local archaeologists are secretly excited that they might have another flag fen on their hands. But just at the moment, everyone's enjoying the more practical achievements of the weekend. I never thought you would get this much done. <laughs> I really didn't. When I left, what, four hours ago, you only got four stakes in. Yeah, but that's the learning curve, Tony. That is it. I mean, well, that's why it bends to the left. <laughs> it's been hard work, Ben. We had a much easier time doing it on the computer screen, I can tell you. Yeah, that's and I'll bet, you, I'll bet yours looks really, really pristine, all nice, yep. neat yeah. little rectangular yep. corners and what have you. Um, Phil, what did you, what did you learn? Well, we learned just how stupid we looked at the beginning, <laughs> I'll tell you that. I mean, when we tried to get that big post into the grain, the first one, and I don't know, just that, that preconceived blueprint, which doesn't work. What do you think of it, Richard? If you sketched it out, you know, <laughs> Yeah, um, I, can I can understand why there are human remains at the edge of it now. <laughs> <laughs>